Welcome to Flip Math Lesson 28 for the fifth grade as we look at measuring time and understanding elapsed time or time that has gone by. Uh, as we get into the, the idea of time, first of all, we need to take um, a little bit of time to review uh, how our different labels fit together. For example, we talk about one hour. One hour is equal to how many minutes? And the quick and easy answer is 60 minutes. The next idea we can look at is a little bit harder. I said, how many, if you have 60 minutes, how many seconds do you have? What we need to understand is, is that one minute has 60 seconds. So how many seconds would be in 60 minutes? That would be 60 seconds times 60 minutes. So that would be 60 times 60, which is going to give us an answer of this. 3,600 seconds. And so we have our first idea. All right. So if you have one day, how many hours do you have? This stuff should be review, should just be popping out. If you have one week, how many days are in a week? Seven days. If you have one year, how many months are in a year? Twelve months. If you have one decade, how many years is a decade? And if you think hard about it, a decade is ten years. If you have a one century, how many years do you have? should know that that's 100 years and one millennium hopefully this will just pop out at you and you know that that's 1000 years and so we have some information that we look at it's review but it's important to know these facts have these facts memorized not this one so much as much as this one that one minute equals 60 cents so make sure you have those ideas memorized. Then we start using these different things. We can talk about reading a calendar. It says according to this calendar what day of the week is the 15th. We see the 15th is circled in red here and by quickly going up we see it's the W day and from your knowledge of the W day that would mean that it is Wednesday. Also a task that should be very familiar to you. We can get into time itself. We can talk about the different types of ways that time is analyzed. We have a digital clock where our numbers are right there in front of us. tells us exactly what we need to know. Um, though we would have to understand whether it's AM or PM. Okay. AM or PM. And then, of course, we have analog clocks with your shorthand meaning the hours and your longer hand meaning the minutes, in which this case, this would be 10, 10, um, and we'll just say it's PM. So we would, once again, we'd have to know, is it AM or PM at the given time, right? But we have understanding how to read a clock, and I know you know how to do that too, but we just wanted to review those ideas very quickly. So now we can start working with using time, understanding how time works, the relationship between different forms of time, and how to read a clock. So it says, if Johnny had lunch two hours before the time on the clock and started practice two hours after the time on the clock, when did he have lunch? And when did his practice start? So the first thing we have to understand is what time is it on the clock? And as you look here, we have a shorthand pointing in between the 1 and the 2, which would mean that it's not quite 2 o'clock yet, but it's still in the 1. And then we have the long arrow pointing down at the 6, which you know is halfway around the clock. So that would be half of an hour. So that would be 1.30. All right. Now the question is, is it a.m. or p.m.? All right. AM or PM. Our clues are going to have to come from what we're seeing here. He said he had lunch two hours before this time. 
So what is two hours before this time? If I were to go back two hours, so here, that would be one whole hour. So our arrow would be here then. Two whole hours, our arrow would be here then. So that would be 11, and the minutes are going to stay the same, 11.30. If this is his lunchtime, it would make sense that he's eating lunch at 11.30 a.m., not 11.30 p.m. That doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. Which would mean that this time here is 1.30 p.m. because we've passed the noon hour. All right. So then as we look for our second idea, it says when does his practice start? We know it's two hours after. And so if we're starting here, we're going to go one hour, two hours. And so our arrow would be pointing here which would mean that at 3.30 p.m. Johnny is starting his practice. So we have that idea. Okay. Sometimes the clock is not given to us though, and we're just given an analog number to understand. For example, if Sarah and her friends attended a show that was 3 hours and 15 minutes long and ended at 8.25 p.m., what time did the show begin? And so we know that the end time was 8.25 p.m. Right? And we want to know what time it began. And it says that it was 3 hours and 15 minutes long. So that means 3 hours and 15 minutes before 8.25 is when it started. So in this case, we can actually subtract 3 hours and 15 minutes, and we're going to get an answer of 5.10, and we're still in the p.m. hour. So at 5.10 p.m., their show started. As you work with moving from one time, 8.25 p.m., and we're subtracting hours and minutes, remember that as you start to borrow and work with this, that the highest number of minutes that you can have is 60. So there are only 60 minutes in an hour. And so you can think about those things as you work with a time elapse problem such as this. Then I'll give you one more time elapse problem to send you on your way. Uh, here's your sample problem. You can work on that. And so this is working with time and elapsed time problems. That is lesson 28 for the fifth grade.